Thanks. Hello. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, it's, it's great that Intel is here and making this bus workshop and also that they invited us to be on stage and um, especially before this topic is kind of uh, always in my head since over a few years and um, because in film co-production is working pretty well especially my, my ex-wife is working this kind of co-production thing and I know a lot how it is working and I'm just wondering if this is something what co-production in games if this is possible as well so um, I'm very happy to, to have you both on stage. Um, Ina couldn't make it, as you know, and, uh, but she already wrote me something. Maybe, uh, uh, um, yeah, I think I don't read it now. I think it makes no sense. It's, it's also a panel what is kind of open for discussion. That means we have, definitely we have a microphone here, what is in the audience, and if you have something what um, you experienced or maybe you have something to add, please, join this whole conversation because, I mean, it's a new topic. Um, and also Ina told me nobody really came to her and said something like that. Hey, I want to do co-production between different countries or between different countries in Germany. And I think this is probably a good possibility for game developers, especially for indie game developers, to go this way. Um, just one question before. Who ever made an application for a funding uh, institution in Berlin or elsewhere? Just raise your hand. So there's uh, not many people. So why? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have projects or is it something you don't know that uh, institutions like Medium Board, Medium Board Berlin Brandenburg is giving money for projects? How is this? Or is that you're a little bit lazy? So you're going to do the next project as an indie game developer and you're definitely going to ask for funding. I will ask for all the money. Cool. <laughs> I will do. <laughs> uh, maybe another question. Who of you is a game developer then? Just, uh, just to see, raise your hands, okay. okay. And what is the rest doing? A regular apps or something like that? Students, students. Yeah. okay, lots of students. <laughs> Great. And, uh, and all of you are from Berlin or are some from other parts of Germany or abroad? Who's from Berlin? Okay. So just to know you better, thanks a lot. Oh, sorry, Thorsten. Yeah. Um, yeah, please welcome my guests, Alexander and André. Mm, some of you know them already, Studio Fitzpin. Please, tell me, what do you think about co-production? Um, okay, so uh, co-production is actually a very important topic uh, for us because, um, you know, um, there are a lot of game developers sitting right here. And... Uh, uh, you should know that making games is pretty hard. I mean, of course, it's like a lot of work, but it also costs a lot of money. And uh, there are a lot of cool funding uh, institutions throughout the whole Germany. And uh, at the Medium Board, um, we, uh, Studio, as Studio Fispin is originally from uh, Baden-Württemberg. So there, there's also a big uh, funding uh, uh, pot where you... Well, not that part, yeah, but... <laughs> um, then there's Bavaria, they have also the FFF, has also a, a big funding budget for games. And um, the thing is that, of course, if you look at these funding things as a, a single thing, it's, it's not as much money as you need to make games, obviously. But, um, so then the question is, why not combine them? And that's something, uh, I mean, we talked about uh, 10 minutes ago, and it's like, yeah, of course, a movie business is doing this for years, but why not games? And they should be doing it, because you, uh, not, it's, it's not, also, not only about the money, but also different regions have different um, um, you know, uh, powers and are best known for different things. For example, we now know how many game developers are sitting right here, but how many of you are actual coders? Hands up, please. Okay, and how much of you are artists? Okay, so you see, so we have way more coders here than artists. And if we would extrapolate that for Berlin, for example, you, I don't know, maybe in Berlin is like the city of coders, of coding, I don't know. Um, but for, for us, for example, Baden-Württemberg is, uh, or the city where Studio Fisman comes from, uh, has a lot of people that do animations. I mean, hand-drawn animations. And um, I don't know, do you know Fisman's first game, Inner World? who has heard or played the inner world. Yay! So less people, that's why I'm not rich yet. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, this, the game is full of hand-drawn animations, and uh, that's 
why it was also cool to be in Baden-Württemberg because they are all the animators uh, uh, are, yeah. So uh, yeah, that's why co-production is very important for us. So we have diversity also, you know, not only diversity in means of uh, uh, what people do, but you have a lot of people coming from different regions. And uh, also you can use the different funding uh, uh, opportunity, opportunities that you have. So, so do you know already uh, an example what is working out? Um, so we don't know if it will work out yet, but <laughs> for example, Studio Fispin uh, applied for uh, the funding in Baden-Württemberg and here in uh, Berlin-Brandenburg. So for how much money you are asking the funding institutions? Um, or uh, how is this kind of process working? Yeah, so basically um, the, the different funding institutions have different budgets. For example, here in Berlin-Brandenburg, um, you can uh, apply for a max about 60K, I guess, that was something. Uh, Riyadh, you know it, it's 60K, right? So that's the max here. Uh, but the maximum amount, for example, in Baden-Württemberg is 100,000K. So, um, Uh, ah, okay. the, the chances are quite low. I, I think in regular uh, or an average in developer in Berlin gets about 30 to 60,000 uh, euros in funding. And it, I, I think this year it was 25 projects or something like that who got funded. Sad that Ina can't be here because she knows yeah. the number in detail. Uh, of course, she's taking care of that every day. Um, yeah, exactly. So basically, um, you, you, um, when you want to get funding for your game, you start working out the budget you need, and then you look up in the institutions that they are. Um, and uh, yeah, so in our case, we uh, started writing the application, and we went to both to Ina, and uh, back then it was Steffi from the uh, MFG Baden-Württemberg, uh, and talked to them, and we're like, hey, um, we wanted to apply to Berlin, but also here in Bavu, because uh, of course we want to combine the force, and yeah, obviously it's the financial force, but also the, the expertise force of these both uh, states in Germany. And uh, Ina was like, wow, oh, okay, cool. That's never, never, never someone has come up in, in, in games and done that. And we were like, why not? You know, because uh, it's a very cool opportunity you have. Of course, it comes with, you know, hassle. Because uh, um, if you want to apply for uh, funding in the different states, of course you have to, um, there are a lot of rules that apply. Like example, um, the money you get, 80% uh, or even more, you have to spend in that region which you get the money from. Is, um, is anyone familiar with the term regional effect, that the thing has to be spent in the same country where you raise the money? Has anyone heard of that before? Regional effect or regional effect? No one? Okay. Yeah, maybe then you should explain it. Oh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, maybe just a few words of who I am and what I do. Um, I'm a freelancer right now, working together with Indies, consulting them for roughly three years. Beginning of this year, I found my first company, which is called Target Games, together with Thorsten Unger, who is not yet in the audience, but will arrive some time today, I guess. Um, and our plan is to raise uh, venture capital and to build up a portfolio of smaller titles and then invest the, adventure, the, the capital from uh, venture or the venture money into several small projects um, yeah, to uh, make it easier for smaller developers to talk to venture capitalists or to venture, um, to get venture money actually. Um, now to come back to the thing of the, the regional effect, uh, you know in Germany we have federalism, so every uh, country of Germany uh, behaves differently and has different things or rules and laws regarding funding. In some countries we have funding like um, yeah, um, uh, Baden-Württemberg, Bavaria, um, Rheinland-Pfalz now as well, here in Berlin actually in some countries there is no funding anymore like Hamburg for example. Um, and now if you raise some money through a public funding project, there's a certain, um, they want to know about the regional effect, which means how much of the money that you get from the government will also be spent in the same country. And this has to be as high as possible because um, you don't want to, uh, the people from Berlin don't want to fund projects that then spend all the money in Bavaria, for example. Um, so uh, most of the time, if you want to apply for several fundings, it could be or it must be important for you to have an office in different uh, countries so you are able to spend the money there where you raise the money, actually. I mean, that's a special situation about, about FISBIN then. Exactly, there because we have there the office, but I mean, Torsten, you can talk about that, the, the, where, how a movie does it. You, yeah. So, the, and yeah, the meaning of co-production. 
I mean, in co-production uh, in film, is it that you actually, you're not as a director, you're not applying for funds. So, so you have a pro producer, so you have a, a producer market. So you, and this is something what I also want to ask you. So if you think of producing also uh, um, game developers, that means that you are trying to get the money for them. So um, not from VCs, but especially to write applications, because I think that game developers should not write applications, they should do games, right? <laughs> and, um, yeah, but if they don't do it, someone has to do it. I mean, yeah. otherwise, um, someone else gets the money. And, uh, um, we definitely have to spend the money, otherwise we have, uh, the next years we have less money. So I mean, this is something yeah. what I'm also going to tell. Ask at the funding institution how much money is left over, so <laughs> probably you get the rest of the money at the end of the year. Um, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's not true. I mean, but uh, it could be a try out. Um, in film, is it like that that you have, uh, especially when we talk about uh, co-production between different countries? I'm not talking about um, German countries. I'm talking about making whatever co-production with Poland. So you have a, a Polish um, film director. He goes now to the production office or to a produ producer in Poland, and the producer raised some money from the um, from the film fund in Poland. So, but it's not enough. Money money and uh, they say, think, okay, to make this title we need maybe two or four more uh, producers, we need two more funds from, or four funds from, from different countries. So next we go to Germany. Um, we, need, we can make the post maybe, the post for finishing the film we can make completely in Germany. So we need whatever 150,000 or even more um, to make the post happening. So if you're looking for a producer, the producer is the co-producer and he's applying for the fund. That means he also has a share on how much money he gets from the fund on the film. So it's something what is probably a little bit complicated because you don't have shares really in, 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 in games. Of course you have shares with the distributor and with the publisher. Uh, but probably it looks like the same. And then you're collecting money with all the producers that at the end you have maybe one million euro and then you can start making the movie. So this is how the uh, co-production is working in film. So my question is, is this something what you think is also fitting as well for you, uh, André? Because, I mean, you want to do something with target games, right? To, yeah, right. to be a producer agency. Yep. Um, yeah, to, to be honest, uh, first of all, maybe we should, should describe the difference between a producer in the movie industry and in the games industry. Because when I talk about a producer, that's, that's the project manager, actually, who is taking care of, of uh, that the project is... Uh, done right and that all the milestones will be uh, in time and everything in quality and budget and so on. And, and uh, in the movie industry, as far as I got it, it's more about uh, someone who just raises the money and supports the, the movie and the production, but it's not taking care of the, uh, of the actual um, production itself then, but just about the money, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, okay. it's, like, it's similar because the producer in movie is the guy that says, I want to get shit done by bringing in money. And <laughs> the producer in games is yeah. the guy who says, I want you to get shit done. <laughs> because we run out of money. Exactly. <laughs> So um, what, what was your position then? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, getting, getting public funding is, um, is a lot of hassle. Uh, I mean, you have to spend a lot of time filling out uh, forms and um, apply to rules that are different in every country. Uh, and this is really complicated um, regarding uh, the, the, the amount of money that you can get then. Um, I mean, you can't get a game done with, okay, depends on, but uh, even nowadays with a budget of 30,000, that really, um, that really isn't that much to, to finish uh, a, a bigger title or, or even small, even the production values for smaller titles getting higher and higher. So I guess um, you, Alex, you wouldn't be able to finish a game with 30,000. No, definitely not the inner world one. Uh, so my question is, who thinks he can get his game done with 30,000? Okay, cool. Because usually when I talk to people, some are like, oh, oh 30,000, that's a shitload of money. I can live a year with that. So of course, yes, but try to pay. Ah, that's an interesting thing. So there are many game developers here, right? Who's working with a team under five people? Hands up. Okay, who's working with a people? Yeah, a two people back there. Hi, Anna. <laughs> who's working with a team? Uh, Bigger than five people. Okay, and now who's working with a team bigger than 10? Still, holy cow. Ah, okay, yeah, Black Forest, of course. Um, yeah, but the thing is that uh, um, these little amounts of money 
easily run out when you have to pay salaries. And I mean, of course, everyone wants to try to live with uh, making games uh, or do make uh, games for a living. So uh, yeah, it's not that much at all. So uh, of course, you don't do usually games with so little money. Yeah, so, so um, if you try to collect out of all German countries um, all those small amounts of money, it's a lot of uh, work to get uh, things done uh, like this. Uh, so um, I, would, I wouldn't recommend this to everyone. I mean, if you can get your game done with 30,000 or with 100,000 or in Bavaria, I don't know, 150,000, then, then it's great. Then it's the best way to apply for this because, okay, you have to do it once. But once you know how to apply for all those different or for, for funding, then you don't have to learn it again. And you can apply uh, maybe every year as long as you finish your game and um, have good relations to the people who spend the money over there. Um, but um, just to focus on, on uh, public funding for bigger projects is... is uh, um, it's not that easy, so uh, maybe it's easier then to, to talk to investors and try to raise the money over there. I mean, okay. there's also um, another funding opportunity is the uh, Creative Desk or Creative Europe uh, funding. Who's familiar with that? Creative Desk, anyone heard of that? Okay, one. That's so I incredible because, <laughs> I mean, Creative Europe is doing a lot of, you know, yeah, apply here, apply that, yeah. and still, I, yeah, there's so less people knowing it. It's strange. I mean, but, but, but that could also be a good opportunity um, to try to work together with different countries and uh, say, okay, you have a partner studio in, I don't know, Ireland or, or France or wherever, and if you want to do get a, a project done together with someone from another country, that even gives you better opportunities to get the money from the Creative Desk Europe because they have certain guidelines that, um, that uh, where they want to see the European uh, ideas or the idea of Europe um, to be fulfilled, that people from different countries are working together. So that's make it, does it also make it easier for you to, to get some money if you have some partners in different countries? Um, but, um, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's quite sad that not so many people know about this funding opportunity because they are very, uh, very often the people from Creative Desk Europe, their only job, and they, are in, they have an office in nearly every country in Europe, the only job is to promote these opportunities that are there to get this funding. Um, and it's sad to see uh, that this year uh, less people actually, or less studios from Germany actually applied than, than the year before. Um, but it's probably it's also the, the point that you need to have 50% own, uh, um, what do you say, Eigenanteil. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you have to, uh, if you apply for 100,000, you have to have 50% by yourself. Yeah. So yeah, your own share, basically. So probably most of the people don't have it. Yeah, but... Um, I mean that's with every funding. You have a certain. You need to double the part that comes from the from the government with your own money, and then it's a, there's a difference between um, the amount of money that has to be in cash on your account uh, and the things that you can uh, bring up in by saying, okay, I work on this project for for I don't know ten people for ten hours uh, every week, and this equals the amount of some uh, x, uh, and this is uh, this is the part that. I Contributing to the project next to the amount of cash that I had of my uh, that, that is on my account, but that that really be, depends from country to country. So I mean, always if, if you get some some public money, you always have to uh, or most of the time you have to double that with your own uh, expenses, with your own work time, or with the amount of cash that you have to uh, <laughs> present to them. Uh, on your um, so she said, uh, um, co-production in games is uh, definitely possible. Um, not a lot of people were asking for something like that, so she has not a reference project. Uh, what was successful in this way. Um, she also said that uh, the nature of uh, working in games or the workflow is more like that you sit on a computer and it's more or less um, important that you sit together in a studio. Is this something what you can as well? Um, yeah, I mean, the, of course, the nature of working in games uh, makes it possible. I, I know a lot of friend teams that uh, uh, work like that. But uh, it's nothing that I would like to do for you know a lot of time. I, I like to when when we work in games, we like to have the people together. We like to see them and interact with them, not only through Skype, but uh, of course, um, games. Working on games as yours uh, 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 makes it totally possible because you don't have to be at the production line. You don't have to inspect materials. Yeah, you know. So, but because our material with uh, with um, which we do games is our brain and, and artistic stuff we do with hands. So um, it makes it possible, but not for me. 
<laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, everybody knows about it. It's quite common that you that you can outsource a lot of things. You don't have to do everything by yourself in your studio. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a bit complicated because you have to take care that every material you receive um, um, is this level of quality that you need in your game. But definitely, you don't have to do everything in your uh, in your studio by yourself. I mean, uh, no one or most of the people that I know that develop games don't do the music by themselves. They hire someone who's sitting somewhere and uh, is doing the music for them and puts it together and then he's only part of the project for a few um, uh, for a short amount of time but um, I mean it's possible to um, uh, to work on games distributed but at least the core team should maybe to get should be together at one place but, I mean uh, it was quite common also some years ago that development studios also opened up um, um, offices in different uh, countries of Germany to receive additional funding and then they just placed the QA over there uh, to, to get the funds there's also on one point, uh, Ina just wrote me, um, in film, um, the film directors wanted to make uh, not any more studio work, so they wanted to go outside and make um, um, off-world, or how you say, um, outside uh, um, shootings at, uh, at original places. So that there is a, it's a kind of a content necessity, so I mean it's mm -hmm. kind of... Uh, it's 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 part of the story that we have to go okay. now to to Poland and whatever, and we have to have this tower. So, is it something? What uh, where's where could be the the, the content necessity in games? Um, yeah, there I guess it's uh, something that uh, what I stated in the beginning is that uh, maybe you you have an awesome school, for example, of animators somewhere, um, or you want to have a specific art style that. Comes, I mean, of course, now nowadays everything's international. You can get, especially in the digital age, uh, like Andre said, you can have teams aboard, whatever. But maybe this is something in games that would also be cool to think a little bit like in movies, you know? Because as yeah, as you said, if I want to have a shot of uh, a specific region, then I have to fucking go there. I cannot <laughs> build it in Maya or whatever. Uh, and maybe it's it's an interesting thought about that in games too. So if you want to make a big, I don't know, whatever game, and you think, hey, for this game, this specific style would fit best. And maybe it's, uh, then you go talk to studios. <clears throat> that, uh, uh, and they are, of course, situated oh. elsewhere. I mean, games like Machinarium or uh, Zamo, Rost, and uh, whatever, uh, have a very specific style that is kind of, well, at least for me, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but you know, has something of the Polish culture where uh, Amanita is from. So uh, I think this could work in games as well. But is it not enough when there is a kind of a cultural exchange? Um, of, sorry? If it's not uh, already content enough when we're talking about cultural, ex uh, cultural exchange? Yeah, uh, it is also, of course. I mean, um, we, um, that's one cool thing in, in when you're doing games and you're going to a lot of conferences, you are, have a lot of international people and you always get to know the different cultures and stuff like that. And I think that is also something, that's what I kind of meant with the art style, because of course your own culture always influences that what you do. So uh, yeah, this is also something that could, uh, games could enjoy a lot, um, uh, could uh, benefit from a lot. I mean, it, it could also be a risk um, because if you outsource something like graphics to China and you don't brief them in detail, yeah, I mean, if they are so cheap and then you want to do it over there and then you ask them to, to draw some trees for your medieval uh, role-playing game in Europe and uh, the style uh, trees are looking different in China, if you don't brief them in detail, you get something totally different um, that you actually need within your game. So culturalization um, is also a challenge for you because you have to really take care if, if we are all talking about the same topic. I mean, even if we have problem already by talking, uh, living in the same country and then talking about producers in film and games, uh, you can think about that it's th that this uh, uh, difficult to multiply if you talk to people from other countries worldwide with their uh, definition of, I don't know, trees or producers or whatever. But uh, just to reach a little bit out, I mean, everybody knows about transmedia stuff and maybe this could be as well a possibility to whatever extent your, your whole storytelling or your interaction with the medium so that you really make a game. And there is also a story going w further in episodes or whatever. Um, this could be maybe a model of co-production as well. And uh, because, I mean, Ina also wrote something like, um, let me see... 
Where is it? Oh yeah, it's, it's uh, her, her ending conclusion. So it's about co-production in games is possible, what she said at the beginning, but uh, mostly not necessary. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, thanks for having us, guys. Uh, it was awesome. <laughs> it's a lot. No, but, but I definitely... <laughs> Oh. That's what she said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks, Irina. <laughs> I so mean, if, if you bring the money, nothing is necessary at all. You can do whatever you want if you get the money, but if you don't have the money, uh, you have to think about ways to acquire the money. And uh, I think uh, co-production definitely is an opportunity to get it. Uh, and I mean, that's also an opportunity right now for for uh, development studios. Um, in the uh, sorry, in the uh, in the times uh, before now, some ancient times. Um, I mean, there was the, the, the model like you as a developer worked together with the publisher who gave you the money and that, that was the deal. And then he published the game and then you moved over to the next game. Um, but nowadays the uh, classical 360 publisher who does take care of everything is a little bit broken. So there's not that one uh, partner that you need to look for that does everything for you. I mean, there are much more opportunities now because you could simply look out for other development studios and partners then to uh, raise additional uh, money, for example, why not look for for an, uh, uh, for, an, for another development studio in a different Germany or in Europe and uh, try to find a studio that does something that you can't do that good by yourself, I don't know, animations uh, or whatever or a different part of the game or whatever and partner up with them and try to build up a a co-production team or, uh, or overall studio, I don't know, um, just uh, based on the project that you want to receive. And then it's an opportunity for both and because you only have to do the, the, the paperwork once and then you get one project uh, done, best way, best case. What I wanted to add is that, of course, it's not a necessity. Necessity? Yeah, it's not necessary. <laughs> It's not necessary, <laughs> now I get it, um, but uh, I mean it was not necessary to go to the moon and we did it, because we can. Yeah. Let's drop the mic. It's not true. <laughs> no, but um, it's an opportunity. I mean, um, uh, other guys do it as well. They don't label it as much, but uh, look at Vlamber, they are f uh, for Luftrausers, trousers, they pick other musicians. They are all over the world, and I think um, thinking um, uh, you know, out of your production box way of thinking, like, okay, we have a studio and we are 10 people here and we have to do it here. Um, thinking outside of it and thinking of, uh, I don't know, there's so much cool stuff going on in Germany alone and more in whole Europe. How could we work together? I think this is something that is uh, a, a great opportunity to produce even more awesome games than to, I mean, Games are a cultural medium for me, so there's a lot of culture in games. Um, and um, as well as with culture itself, it can be even greater if you combine things. If you combine Spanish cuisine tapas with uh, uh, Japanese food, it's awesome. If you do this with games, it's also awesome. So that's my conclusion. So you like fusion? Yes, a lot. I mean, yeah. th there's another example of uh, Deck 13, who have done lots of the Fallen, for example, who partnered up with the studio in Poland. I'm not quite sure, was it CD Project or does someone know who's the other developer of lots of the Fallen? Okay, but they uh, partnered up with a team in Poland um, um, to, to be able to raise the, the quality bar of their, of their production that they did because they were not able to do this alone because the studio was not big enough. So they looked for a partner that was in a different country and it worked out, worked out well regarding the quality of the title. But uh, as far as I know, there are some legal issues right now, so you have to be very, very careful then uh, by partnering up to partner up with the right people. Yeah, of course. I, I mean, mean this, yeah, yeah, but this is... Uh, uh, probably the major problem because we are not really knowing exactly how to share, yeah. especially because when, when it's not existing right now, so we have to make a plan, maybe as well with the funding institutions that there is a whatever, a little bit of regulation, how much the producer or the team is in another country mm -hmm. can get out of the, when, when the, when we are talking always about revenue at the end, so and yeah, everybody yeah. wants to have money back as well, the institutions also want to have money back. Uh, they don't give it for free and forever, so um, it's a lot of money talking, definitely, and makes probably everything more complicated at the beginning. Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, as Andre said, it's very hard, and uh, of course, well, very hard, that's uh, relative, but of course you have to put a lot of work into something like that, and, uh, but I'm totally uh, convinced that it's uh, worth the effort, 
and um, what you talked about the uh, differences, cultural differences, and, and stuff like yeah. that. And of course, there are the problems, you know, cultural communication, whatnot. But um, I think if you if you uh, 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 go with that thinking into your project, and your project is exactly fitted to do that, um, then it mm, there won't be that problems, you know, the. Mm -hmm. uh, But, the, but then you underline that we have to talk about content only, right? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. And this is the base of why co-production is needed. Exactly. Cool. <laughs> um, as I saw, Andreas is here from Black Forest Games. Is he still there, somewhere hinter the, uh, behind yeah, the pillar? He's hiding there. <laughs> have you, uh, maybe some, some examples from the audience then. Have you done any co-production uh, yet with Black Forest Games? Did you work together with another team? Is there a mic somewhere so everyone can hear him? Yeah, we can open up for uh, open discussion. What, what you guys... M so we have 10 minutes for this. Oh. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> you can, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Hello, ich bin Andreas von Black Forest Games. Um, ja, wir haben Outsourcing schon oft genutzt, uh, hauptsächlich im Grafikbereich. Hat für uns da am besten funktioniert. English, please. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> Switch to English. Um, yeah, I'm Andreas from Black Forest Games. Um, we used outsourcing um, for past products that we did, uh, mostly at Spellbound times since, still. So for Arcania Gothic 4, for example, we did a lot of the mass production art uh, uh, assets outsourced. So we did the quality references in-house and um, with uh, requirement documents and so on. And uh, a lot of the mass production then was outsourced to studios in different countries. Small, uh, small studios mainly, so or even freelancers, single but persons. But we never ask for money in the country. But not no 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 not for um, co-funding. So mm -hmm. basically, Is only it um, uh, we never had a project where it was suitable. Yeah, but, but did you apply for public funding at all for some yes, projects? Yes, we we uh, applied for MFG public funding. Yeah. And we got it for Gianna Sisters, Twisted, for, for Gianna Sisters' um, successor of, of Twisted Dreams. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, just then, you didn't apply for, for um, uh, money from Europe, from nope, the creator? No, from Europe. It okay. was uh, from Baden-Württemberg. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Is there somebody else who wants to share his share thoughts? His experience with uh, funding or even working together overseas or with different countries and teams or studios? I mean, it could be an opportunity as well uh, if you think about uh, crowdfunding platforms. I mean, uh, if you want to go on Kickstarter, for example, it's always uh, crucial that you have a large audience um, that you can address uh, to receive some money because if you don't generate any buzz in the beginning, no one, uh, most of the time, no one will take care of your project and you won't, uh, won't receive the money that you're looking for. But it could also be a good idea, I don't know, for, to, to uh, look for... Um, uh, development teams with, um, uh, within different countries to partner up with them to, to double the audience that you can get uh, to raise awareness on Kickstarter. I'm not quite sure if there was anyone who did that before, but uh, maybe this is something where you can also generate some press uh, um, attention out of it. Uh, I mean, opportunities are there, you just have to think about how to, how to use them and uh, I mean, not only care about making your game, I, I mean, you still have to make a great game, but beside of that, you have to take care somehow that you get the money to, uh, to get it really well done because the competition is quite fierce right now. <laughs>